Magnetic Indicator Base Improvements. This is a part two video. Our first video we went through how to repair the base. Since I didn't have any other posts or clamps, I decided to design and make my own. At the end of this video, I'm going to take a moment to answer the questions that were left in the comment section in the previous video. So please stay tuned for that. Okay, before we get started, please take a moment to like and subscribe. It's free and it'll help me out. Okay, let's get started right now. I'm going to skip covering the design portion and just cover individual features as I assemble the parts together because there's quite a few different parts that go together in this guy with different versions as well. So I put all the parts on in one go and let's see what this actually looks like here. Let's go print, leave everything standard. I'm not doing anything fancy with it. This printing will take a while. Okay, now that we have that done, let's check out what the layers are actually going to look like. Let's sweep around here a bit. Everything's on, everything's touching. Okay. So our first layer is going to look like this. Start the build up. Now right about here, when this gets to be close like this, we run into some issues when we join, because sometimes these guys will flex and it'll knock these things off. And that also goes with this part here. You're going to see down here where it's nothing and then it's something, because this is printing basically in outer space. So you're going to run into problem with stringers going across, but for what this is, it doesn't matter. You can just snip them off. We go upward, and those are the only two real problems that we have with all of this stuff. Boom, and we're done. Okay, we're ready to print. Let's print. It's time to tap the holes. Okay, some of these guys need to be tapped. So all you do is take it. I always use quarter 20. That's just the size that I prefer to use. It taps effortlessly. Try and be as square as you possibly can to the hole. It helps. I guess I should demonstrate power tapping with a drill, but I prefer not to, but I will. Hold it as perpendicular as possible, nice and firmly. Let's talk about the base mount. Okay, let's take a look at the base. Now this base is an eight millimeter base still. That means it's got an eight millimeter screw. How this guy comes apart. The screw is only as long as the height of this piece because I wanted it to fit inside. Why this piece is so rigid when it's on here is because I added a ring on the inside and that ring holds everything together and this is actually relatively tight to the screw and so is this piece here. So to put it back together, push 
that up. Falls through the hole. Locks down and it's very strong once it's on there. And the tighter you put it, the more it's gonna take to, to move it around. Does rotate rather smoothly. Lock it into place. We can install our other parts here. Now all of these parts are hollow. That's why they're so light and they're also extremely rigid, but making them hollow and 3D printing also makes them a little bit weaker than if they were injection molded. Your standard arms, they come in different lengths. Uh, you can have them longer, shorter, you can have multiples of each other. Uh, it's just a simple pinch. I put a metal bolt with a metal, sorry, a metal nut with a metal bolt going through because it seems to be a lot easier and you do need that extra strength because if you're, these are, bases are relatively heavy uh, when you compare it to the weight of the plastic, but I mean, it's not going anywhere once you tighten it down. There are other forms that you can use and in this case, just standard nuts and bolts, put them together. So you can interchange, put one in, oopsie, put a different one in. So they are strong within reason. Let's find out exactly how we're going to hold on to the indicator. If we take a look at the profile of these two indicators, you'll see that they're different. This V profile here and this V profile here, what makes them hard to fit to the same part. By adapting a rounded feature, it can snap into multiple different shapes of the Vs, different sizes and different angles. So we adapted it just from the turn to the swivel. And this guy mounts this way. It'll mount in this way here. It'll mount this way here. So it's relatively universal and you can flip this around basically any way you want. Same with this guy, except for this guy won't rotate. Depending on your situation, you may really need rotation. Okay, here's a plunge indicator holder. This one will do the rotation, so it'll rotate around. It'll also tilt in any direction. So this is pretty universal, especially when it comes to a plunge indicator. Plunge indicator, they're all different. They're not all the exact same. So if we just unscrew this guy here, the reason why we have these three screws here is this height from the screw here to the top is different on different indicators. And the last thing you want to do is put this together and then have it jiggle around. So as we put this in here, I don't know where the actual height of my screw is going to be. So by having this adjustment with these other screws, it locks in really nicely and makes the indicator very firm. So without those three adjusting screws, I could make it perfect for one indicator, but you couldn't make it perfect for all indicators. You gotta have a swivel attachment. Let's take a look at the rotating and the interchangeable section heads. So let's take this guy off of here. This guy moves up and down. Pull that guy off. Now this guy here is a universal end. It holds on the indicator. This here is a swivel, so it allows the indicator to swivel this way. If you want, you can also turn around and put a secondary swivel on, loosen this guy off here, and it'll allow you to get basically anywhere you need your indicator to go. So it can rotate this way, rotate this way, and also rotate around. So how does, how does this work? 
Well, if I were to take my locking screw off, oop, have my expensive indicator on there, my indicator won't come off because there is a secondary locking screw that just holds these two pieces together. You loosen this screw off and that piece comes off and it sits inside of this channel. Still rotates around. Put our locking screw in. Oh, there we go. And it locks everything in place. Our interchangeable head here allows us to switch back from a plunge indicator to a finger finger indicator, multiple different styles of finger indicator as well. In my opinion, how this is an improvement over the original piece. Okay, to do an example, I'm going to use this mag base here. Let's put this guy on here. Almost 2,000 grams. This guy with the mag base, with the indicator on, Fold that down a little bit so it doesn't fall over. Half the weight. So therefore you can put a lot more extensions on and still have the same magnetic strength holding this onto a piece of metal or whatever. Okay, here's one that's assembled. I put this sheet metal down to be able to grip on here with the base. So the more joints you have, obviously, the more flex you're going to have in the system but this gets an incredible reach and keep in mind you can also turn around and put two or three of these guys on if you have to get into a spot that's really really far away and the nice thing is these guys are incredibly light so it won't snap the base off you can put swivels in or you can swivel this guy around swivel this guy around this way you can get in almost anywhere you need to get in uh, works really well Swivels here, and you lock everything down, swivels. You can get to spaces that are incredible. Now this one is with the plunge indicator. Keep in mind you can add all of the other attachments onto this guy as well. And this guy here is with the finger indicator. Okay, let's answer your questions that you had from the original video. I think this is an ideal time to answer some of the questions about the last video that I posted. And one of the questions was, when I removed my magnet on the inside, it demagnetized because it was an iron, iron core. How do I tell the difference between an iron core magnet and an actual physical magnet on the inside? So let's take this guy apart and look down the barrel, or look down the tap hole and see. So, let's see if we can see this here or not. It'll be hard to see, so I'm going to use an external light source here. There we go. Now, do you see how you can see that this guy's black? Okay, if you have a real magnet, it's going to be black and not shiny. But you say, well, it could have rusted or something else like that. If you take a sharp instrument, preferably a carbide tip scribe, and stick it in the hole, whoops, and scratch back and forth on here, and what you scratch becomes, oops, and what you scratch becomes shiny, then you'll know that you have an iron, iron core instead of a magnetic core. And if you pull the iron core out, it'll lose, it may lose its magnetivity. So therefore, your base won't work again. Um, there's a few ways of flashing it, but I'm not going to get into that in this video. Another question was about the different mag bases. How the more expensive mag bases are stronger than the weak mag base. These are older mag bases, and they are, like this is a true, and this guy here is a true magnet on the inside. They are basically the exact same as these guys, but they're older. They're, this guy's probably at least 10 years plus. The newer ones 
They're probably using a cheaper grade magnetic core on the inside and therefore they probably are weaker. I hope that answers any of your questions. If you have more questions about today's video, please leave them in the comments section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Well, what did you think? Let me know in the comments section below. If you have ideas to improve this even further, let me know as well. If you have ideas for other videos, throw it in there as well. If you want to see other great videos just like this one, check out my YouTube channel, Shop and Math. And if you have not already, please like and subscribe. It's free and it'll help me out. All you have to do is click on the icon on my face and I'll do the rest. Thank you for taking the time to watch my video and have a great night. Oh yeah, I almost forgot to tell you the most important part. If you want to download the STL files and print your own, the link is located in the description.